Greetings and salutations, everyone. Oh, yes. I hope all is well. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Oh, yes. Today is Sunday, February 13th, 2022. And I am the Professor Emeritus, Dr. Burgundy in gold. <laughs> At your service. Today is a very special day. We are celebrating not just the Super Bowl, not just the Olympics, not just Black History Month, but we are celebrating a very, very special moment, a very special point in time for the land of Burgundy in gold. Oh, yes, especially during Super Bowl weekend. Oh, yes. We are celebrating one person, one man who took us to the mountaintop planted his flag, and took us all to Disneyland with him. Because <laughs> he was the MVP of the Super Bowl, too. Oh, yes. His name is the one, the only, Mr. Doug Williams. Oh, yes, Mr. Doug Williams, ladies and gentlemen. One seven seventeen himself. Oh, yes. Doug Williams. Burgundy and gold. Let's go. You see that banner right there? You see that patch in the middle there? <laughs> Mr. Williams did that. Mm -hmm. He wasn't alone. He had the hogs with him. He had the posse with him. Oh, yes. He had the whole squad. Oh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, he was the MVP. It took a team effort. And we're going to see just how we got to that point. Oh, yes. Hail to the burgundy and gold. You already know what it is. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm the professor! And I do know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, I did some research on Mr. Williams. You know how I did it. I Googled it! Yes, indeed I did. Mm -hmm. Now, we're just going to go to the Google search engine. I have my rusty, trusty computer here. Oh yes, you see what I'm doing, yeah? Now, we are not in the museum as Mr. Fish usually is. We are in the land of Burgundy and Gold. Oh yes. Shout out to all of my fellow family of the Burgundy and Gold. You know who you are. Hell, baby. Oh, yes. Now, what I did was I typed in, in all caps, because he is one of the goats. Oh, yes, he is a legend. You better know it. Now, all caps, starting with capital D-O-U-G space. Capital W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. Enter on the jank right there. And it comes right up now with Douglas Williams. <laughs> you see it there? Now, Mr. Williams. Oh, yes. He has a lot of information on him. Of course, he's a legend. International news. Oh, yes. I see here. Let's see. Uh, da, da. Okay, now, NFL.com. The Washington Post.com. SI, which is SportsIllustrated.com. WUSA9.com, that is a local station here, a news station here in the in the DMV. Oh, yes. Ah, let's see here. Of course, it's Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. And I see here an Instagram profile. Instagram. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You can find the professor on Twitter at Professor BNG. Oh, yes. Facts. Professor BNG. But let's get back to it, shall we? I did a little write-up on Mr. Williams, and it goes a little something like this. So goes. <laughs> Looks sharp, I know. It's sharp, very nice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Facts. Here we go with black facts. Mr. Douglas Lee Williams was born August 9th, 1955, in Zachary, Louisiana. He is a Super Bowl winning starting quarterback that is the QB1. Oh, yes, QB1 for then the Washington Redskins, a former head coach at Grambling State University and is currently a senior advisor with the Washington Commander. So we had the Redskins, actually it was the Braves, then the Redskins, then the Washington football team, and now the Commanders. Oh, yes, got to stay hip, got to stay with it. Oh, yes. Doug Williams is best known for his performance with the Washington Redskins in Super Bowl 22 against the Denver Broncos, where he was named Super Bowl MVP for passing 
340 yards and four touchdowns. Oh, yes. He is the first, the first black quarterback to both start and win a Super Bowl. <laughs> and be the MVP. Oh, yes. Let's get it, Doug. Williams attended Grambling State University, where he played under the legendary head coach, Sir Eddie Robinson. Now, right away, I want you to research Grambling State. That is capital G R A M B L I N G. Grambling State University, where he played under head coach, Mr. Eddie, capital E D D I E Robinson. That is capital R O B I N. S-O-N. Oh, yes. As a four-year starter, Doug Williams guided the Tigers to a 36-7 and record and then led the Tigers to three Southwestern Athletic Conference Championships. Williams was named Black College Player of the Year twice. Oh, yes. Not once, but twice, because he's just that nice. <laughs> Facts! Oh, yes. In 1977, Williams led the NCAA in several categories, including, including, including total yards from scrimmage, passing yards, and touchdown passes, and the yards per play. Mr. Williams was balling, ladies and gentlemen. He's a baller. Oh, yes. Williams finished fourth in Heisman Trophy voting. Can you believe that? Oh, behind Mr. Earl Campbell, Terry Miller, and Ken McAfee. Okay. Williams graduated from Grambling with a bachelor's degree in education, and he began working on his master's degree before the 1978 NFL Draft. Oh, yes, the NFL Draft in 1978. Despite the success that he enjoyed on the field, Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive coordinator, Mr. Joe Gibbs, remember that name, Mr. Joe Jackson Gibbs, was the only NFL coach that visited Williams to work him out and scout him. The only one, despite all the success he had. Only one, you mean to tell me only one? Mm, preposterous, yeah. Mm, only one, yeah. Mm, we'll see how that plays out here. Mm -hmm. Now, Gibbs spent two days with Doug Williams reviewing playbooks, film, and going through passing drills. Impressed by his poise, work ethic, and studious nature, Gibbs rated Williams as the best quarterback in the draft. Hmm, think about that. Keep that in mind. Writing in his scouting report that Williams had a big time arm with perfect passing mechanics and was a natural leader. Very academic and extremely prepared. Football smart. Hmm, professorial, you might say. <laughs> Facts. Oh, yes. Now, Joe Gibbs, he then recommended that the Buccaneers select Williams with their first round draft choice. Talk about belief. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. We'll see how that plays dividends in the end. Uh, following the recommendation of Gibbs, Tampa Bay did indeed draft Williams in the first round. And guess what number he was overall? <laughs> he was number 17 overall. <laughs> Facts. Oh, yes. Number 17, drafted number 17. Oh, and this was in the 1978 NFL draft. Williams became the first, the first African-American quarterback taken in the first round of an NFL draft. Can you believe it? I can, because he's just that good. Now, in 1979, against the Chicago Bears, Williams and Bears quarterback Vince Evans made history by making it the first NFL game to ever have a black Starting quarterback on both teams. Not just one team, but two teams. Oh, yes. The first time in NFL history, folks. Starting quarterbacks. Starting quarterbacks on both teams. Ah, oh, yes. Now, Tampa Bay, which had won just two games in the first two years of the franchise, went on to the playoffs three times in five seasons with Williams as starter and played in the 1979 NFC Championship game. Talk about a game changer, a climate changer. He shifted the whole organization towards winning. Oh, yes. Let's keep moving right along. <laughs> Williams was the only starting African-American quarterback in the NFL at that time. He was the only black QB1 in the whole entire NFL at that time. Oh, yes. We're talking about 1979, folks. Oh, yes. During his tenure with the Buccaneers, Williams was paid $120,000 a year. 
the lowest salary for a starting quarterback in the league and the it was less than the salary of 12 backup quarterbacks can you believe that the nonsense i'm appalled crazy man after the 1982 season williams asked for a six hundred thousand dollar contract the bucks owner Hugh Culverhouse refused to budge from his initial offer of $400,000 despite protests from the coach, John McKay. Even the coach was like, yo, please, we need to pay my man, Mr. Williams. He needs that bread. He's that good. Hook him up. The owner said, no, I'm sorry, no. They're fosters. <sighs> so... This is what caused Doug Williams to leave the NFL and go towards the upstart United States Football League's Oklahoma Outlaws. Williams ended up leaving the NFL completely, missing the entire 1983 season. In 1984, Williams led the Outlaws of the USFL in passing, completing 261 out of 528 passes for 3,084 yards and 15 touchdowns. Quite nice. In 1985, the team moved to Arizona and merged with the Arizona Wranglers to become the Arizona Outlaws. Mm -hmm. After the USL was shut down, I'm sorry, after the USFL was shut down in 1986, Williams returned to the NFL, joining the Washington Redskins. And how do you think he got there? Mm. Shall we proceed? Yes, indeed. <laughs> now, <laughs> He was reunited with his former offensive coordinator, Joe Gibbs, oh, yeah, who was now the team's head coach. <laughs> you see, just a little time, a little patience, keep grinding, keep working, it'll work out. Just never, never, ever give up. Perseverance! Oh yes, perseverance, baby. <laughs> Facts! Oh yes, let's keep it going. Mm -hmm. Now, initially, William served as a backup for starting quarterback, then starting quarterback, Jay Schrader. Mm, but after Jay Schrader became injured, William stepped in and led the Redskins to an opening day victory against the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes, Keith. The Philadelphia Eagles got beat by my main man, Doug Williams, in his first time out. <laughs> oh, yes. Let's keep it on moving. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, this was in the 1987 season. Mm -hmm. Williams and Schrader had somewhat a chilly relationship stemming from Schrader ordering Williams to get off the field when the Redskins thought Schrader had been injured in the 1986 NFC title game and sent Williams in to substitute for him. It would be one of the three times that Williams substituted for Schrader and led the team to victory. The other two were November 15th against Detroit, oh yes, and December 26th at Minnesota, oh yes. Williams only started two games, September 20th at Atlanta and November 23rd against the Rams. While both starts were losses at the end of the season when the Redskins had qualified for the playoffs, Williams, with his 94.0 passer rating, was chosen as the starter or known as the QB1. Yeah. Ha. Yes, indeed. Yes, he led the team to Super Bowl 22 in which they routed. They routed. They destroyed. They smashed the Denver Broncos, becoming the first black quarterback to both play in and win and start the Super Bowl. Oh, yes. According to legend, Williams was asked this question on Media Day. How long have you been a black quarterback? Hmm. Odd question, yeah. He supposedly, Mr. Williams supposedly replied, I've been a quarterback since high school and uh, I've been black all my life. Yeah! See that answer? Mm-hmm. Professorial. Oh, yes. On the day before Super Bowl 22, William had a six-hour root canal surgery performed to repair a dental bridge abscess. Ugh. <sighs> Man, what do you want to think about it? 
Then on January 31st, 1988, Mr. Douglas Lee Williams engineered a 42 to 10 route over the Broncos who were led by quarterback John Elway. Mm -hmm. Williams completed 18 of 29 passes for 340 yards with four touchdown passes. <laughs> All four touchdowns were thrown in the second quarter, which set a Super Bowl record for most touchdowns thrown in a single half, let alone a single quarter. My man was on fire. <laughs> oh, yes! Brilliant! <laughs> Facts! Mr. Douglas was named Super Bowl MVP for his efforts, making him the first, the first Super Bowl winning quarterback who was African American. Oh, yes, he was the first African American quarterback to both win a Super Bowl and be named its MVP. Oh, yes, you better know. Do the research on Mr. Williams. He's a bad, bad man. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes. Now, he broke the Super Bowl single game record of 331 passing yards set in 1985 by Joe Montana. Oh, yes. Mr. Williams also tied the Super Bowl single game record for passing touchdowns set by Terry Bradshaw in 1979. <laughs> Mr. Williams also had an 80 yard scoring pass to Ricky Sanders, one of the posse. Ricky Sanders, and that tied the Super Bowl record for the longest pass play from scrimmage. <laughs> Balling, on fire, tore him up. Yes, he did. Oh, yes. <sighs> and then he said he's going to Disneyland. <laughs> you better know it. Doug Williams, touch of class, touch of class. You better know. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, Williams began his collegiate head coaching career at Morehouse, at Morehouse. He began his collegiate head coaching career at Morehouse College. Please do your research on Morehouse College. That is capital M-O-R-E-H-O-U-S-E. -O -E. Oh, yes. In 1997, he was named the head coach. After that, he was named the head coach, the head football coach at, guess where? At Grambling State University. At Grambling State University, his alma mater. Succeeding the legendary Sir Eddie Robinson. Oh, yes. Do the research on Eddie Robinson. I'm trying to tell you. He led the Tigers to three consecutive Southwestern Athletic Conference titles from 2000 to 2002 before leaving to rejoin the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as a personnel executive. See, it all comes around for the circle for Mr. Williams, but he's not done yet. There's more. Oh, yes. In February 2009, Mr. Williams was named the director of personnel, I'm sorry, professor, professional scouting for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Williams was, Williams was subsequently hired as general manager of the Norfolk expansion franchise in the United Football League, now known as the Virginia, the Virginia, the Virginia Destroyers. Oh, yes. On February 21st, 2011, Williams resigned from the Destroyers to begin his second stint as the head football coach, once again, at Grambling State University. Oh, yes. In February 2014, ah, <laughs> go strike up the band, baby. Williams rejoined the Washington Redskins. Yeah. As a personnel executive, the hiring marked Williams' return to the Redskins officially. Oh, yes. Williams was then promoted to the position of Senior Vice President of Player Personnel in June of 2017. Then in 2020, following a front office restructure, after the hiring of Ron Rivera as head coach, Mr. Williams, Mr. Touch of Class, was named the team's Senior Vice President of Player Development and the following year, keeps going higher and higher, you see. And the following year, he became a senior advisor to the team president, my brother, <laughs> Mr. Jason Wright. <laughs> oh, yes. So Doug Williams is currently, he's not only a Super Bowl MVP, Super Bowl champion, 
But he is also now the senior advisor to team president Jason Wright of the Washington Commanders. Oh yes, it's just appropriate. Oh yes. <laughs> now, you can check out more information of Mr. Williams on the Washington Commanders official website for the team, the official team website, which is commanders.com. Oh yes. Now, do your research, do your diligence, learn about the Washington Redskins, Washington football team, the Washington Commanders. Most importantly, learn about the main man, Doug Williams, number 17, drafted number 17, best quarterback in his draft class. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a wonderful day. And as always, be kind to each other. Don't believe the hype. Just do what you need to do to be successful and be proud of yourself. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And by the way, hail to the burgundy and gold. <laughs> Cheers! And Godspeed! I'm the Professor Emeritus Dr. Burgundy and Gold. At your service. At Professor BNG on Twitter. You know what it is. Peace. Peace. <laughs>